Okay, we are seven minutes past, so I think it's time to hit it. Don't you? Look at this garbage. You actually can't see how messed up my desk is. Uh, <laughs> there you go. There's a better uh, view of mess desk. So I think I might just start with cleaning this up because this is all that matters now. This and, and, and this. And that's, and that's it. Um, this is important, but uh, we'll just toss this over here for a minute. But yeah, bear with me as I uh, settle in and, and tidy just a touch. We have our uh, hardware store solder from my run yesterday. I uh, probably don't need this wire anymore. I think we're, I think we're done. I think we're done building hardware. Uh, Worm <laughs> says, evening, how was your short nap? Quite good, quite good. I mean, it's been, you know, I went to bed around midnight-ish. Uh, kid did not want to sleep last night, which was, uh, thankfully shared by me and the wife, or I'd be even more dead, but, um, appreciate her, because really it was supposed to be my job last night. And, yeah, so I've been, I've been up for a while. I finally woke up around nine, so not too early, not too late. Got myself some McDonald's breakfast, and, uh, well, here we are. So it was, it was a reasonable nap, is what I'm saying. Anyway, just gonna get some of this stuff out of my way real quick. <clears throat> Wires go over here. This thing, this thing, I can just... We're done with you. And I don't want to see you any more. Maybe I should sort things into the proper sorting bins. Yeah, so anyway, what are we up to today? Because it's in the description, but um, I guess if you're going to make a video of a thing, you should probably describe what the thing is that you're doing. Um, so the other day we got... So firstly, I should say this uh, this weekend is the... I'm calling it the Mega Stream of Mega Streams. Um, defining mega stream as like a, a four hour stream um because i have much to get through and uh, not much time because i am yet again if you're watching these you probably know going to vcf midwest this coming weekend and uh going to exhibit something i don't know i have i have a booth if i exhibit nothing that's also fine but i do have a booth it would be nice to do something. Anyway, uh, therefore, this weekend I need to bust out a lot of this stuff. And yesterday I got this keyboard circuit hardware bit. It looks like it's more or less working in a way that I can that I can deal with. Um, so we will have at least the hardware part of keyboard input going. Uh, yesterday I ended the day with um, what appeared to be a working keyboard in it routine. Though I didn't debug it super well, but it, it seems like more or less it's doing what I expect it to do. Which, of course, uh, the way this is designed, uh, keyboard in it isn't super complicated. This hardware is pretty straightforward. It's not. There's no software on here. It's all hardware. Uh, these are just uh, gals, just some programmable logic. And so the initialization routine is basically just reset all of the um flip flops on here and make sure they're in a make sure i know that i am at the beginning of reading the keyboard matrix so that when i then subsequently go to read the keyboard matrix um i know where i am and that's about that but it seems to be working pretty okay so today is going to be mostly back to software probably all software i can't think of a reason why it wouldn't be software and that software is going to be read the keyboard matrix. What I'm thinking, because I always have the best ideas when I'm off camera, or at least it gives me a second to process. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do it as simple as possible. We're only going to handle one key down at a time. And uh, more or less the way that's going to work is I'm going to write a routine for get pressed key. And it will scan the matrix um, if the matrix was scanned and 
during the scan no press down keys were detected, then uh, we'll just loop again until we find that a key was pressed down. We will record the key that was pressed down, or really just the ASCII code, I don't know. Um, we'll record something about the last key that was written down, and then we will return it if we scan. We will scan, and the first key that we find that that is pressed, we'll just return that. Um, then finally, subsequently, on the next uh, call to the git, git key routine, uh, if we scan, it, we do the same thing. If we scan and, and no keys were found pressed down, then we just loop again until we encounter a key being pressed down. And if the key that we encounter being pressed down is the same one that was pressed down last time, uh, and we will also record the no key down situation in that in that key thing. So if the, if no key is pressed down, then it will clear out that that thing. So that solves our problem of the same key being pressed twice because it will need to be scanned and then detect a no key press and then scanned again in order for it to count as two key presses. Uh, anyway, and so if it's if it's second scan, exact same key again, then we treat that as no keys being pressed down because we don't we that key is still down. I think that's my that's my hack for uh, detecting when the key is up and waiting for another key up and key down for the next one. So that way we don't have to keep like two copies of the keyboard matrix in memory. Uh, we don't have to really keep any, we don't have to, because I was figuring we'd have to keep like in RAM a 40 whatever uh, byte array or maybe like a bitmap of what keys are currently pressed down and compare it each time. But I'm not, with my simple way that I just described, we don't have to do that. We'll just scan through if we detect a key, and then there are several cases, as I described, where we either keep looking for keys or ignore if the same key is down. I think you roughly get it. So that's that's my plan for simplifying this code. Um, the I was going to say something about what the tricky bits are going to be, but um, honestly, the tricky bits are never what I expect them to be, so I'm not even going to say what I think the tricky bits are going to be. There we go. I've moved some of the mess to other locations that you can't see. So that's the same thing as clean, right? Oh, put these on. So I suppose to software, oh, we go. Okay, so last code that we looked at was, I keep wanting to type on the, uh, the in-progress keyboard. Let me just move that out of the way a little bit, because that is weirdly tempting. And uh, if you didn't see my message from earlier, my basic plan for today, and probably tomorrow, we'll see about tomorrow, is uh, I'm going to do like from 2 to 6 maybe. Might be earlier if I can manage to get this working in under four hours but we'll see uh and then i'm gonna take a take a break maybe until like eight and then go from like eight to midnight on other work but uh that schedule is obviously subject to change but that's generally what i'm shooting for so the other day we implemented init keyboard like i was saying um this basically uh sets the the latch high and when latch is high and we try and clock an input from the controller it resets uh, it resets the um, shift register, clocks in the current value of the keys on the current column, and uh, moves to the to the next column. So it does that first latch and clock, then it lowers the latch here uh, on this line, and then six times we do a clock with latch low, which when the clock when the latch is low and we do a clock, it shifts the shift register. So when the latch is high, it grabs all the values. When we clock with the latch not asserted, then we just shift them out uh, into the Nintendo. Um, and we do that six times to get to the seventh bit, which is not connected to any keys. It is connected to the column line for row one, or for column one. So that indicates that we're on column one. Then, after we're done doing this little loop where we just clock six times and that's it 
when we exit that, we check what the final, what that seventh value that we clocked in was, and we expect it to be zero. Um, the NES inverts the, the inputs that's getting in, so for all of the ones that are, all of the keys that are off, basically, you get ones, and when you get one that is off, other way around, when all the keys are off, you get all ones, for anything that is high, you get a zero. Um, so we expect a zero in that position. If we don't get a zero, then we do this whole loop again until we finally get a zero in that position. And in that case, we finally know, oh, I am currently on uh, column one and we're done because the idea is then the next time we do get key, we'll do, uh, hmm, I think about this. What I was thinking last night was, uh, we don't need to do much resetting because we know, oh, we're on, we're on column one. so. Don't worry about it. But um, at the beginning of each get key, presumably we will do a, a latch and clock uh, to you know latch in the current values, which will move us to the next row, which is not really a huge problem if we just always assume we start from uh, column two um, whenever we are scanning keys, which is maybe not the craziest thing just because it makes the code easier. Maybe let's just do that because uh, if we start from column two, then we can easily, as we clock in keys, um, I mean, I guess we just do it seven times, right? Like I'm thinking, oh, we gotta, we gotta wait and check for the, uh, column, column one bit, but we already reset everything. So if we are keeping everything balanced as far as how many times we cycle through stuff and, uh, it's always, you know, eight, which is the number of columns that there are on this keyboard, then we don't like even need to check. We only need to check it during initialization and then we're good. Um, which I was about to say, our code is easier because then we, we just check uh, every time to see if we were on uh, row one. And if we were, then we stop scanning the matrix. And then the next time around when we do our latch and read, we'll be on column two again. But we don't even need to check. So that's a moot point. But uh, eh, yeah, I guess I can, I, I'll start it. I'll start scanning at column two because why not it's it's arbitrary which column to start with okay slurp of water to uh steal myself and then we'll try implementing what i just wrote so um for starters actually even before we do this um, we need to steal something out of the book that we used for uh, character reading, which is, actually, no, it's going to be a little bit different because I was going to say, no, we don't need to write back to this lookup table. Sorry, thought, thoughts in my head that I'm not communicating. So we have this character lookup table, which is just a big table of bytes in the ROM that... Uh, basically correlate the ASCII code, which is the index into this table. So this table is 128 bytes big um, for the 128 ASCII codes to um, a, uh, a Nintendo GPU tile number uh, that says what tile we should draw on the screen for that. So we have that table. We need a similar table for the keyboard to convert positions on the keyboard matrix to um, basically the, the ASCII character. Now, when I do more stuff with this keyboard later on after Vintage Computer Festival, uh, which I, hopefully I will do, um, I, I plan on keeping on this series a little bit. Um, I still want to, I will not be porting BASIC to this for VCF, obviously, um, but I still intend to do that afterwards. So we'll be doing more work here, but for this super simple version, um, I was going to say something is fine, but this is, this is not a good sign. I'm trying to keep my brain in a good place and I'm already going off on tangents and forgetting what I was talking about. Uh, if you have any idea what I was getting at there before I totally lost my train of thought, let me know. Um, but anyway, I need to make a lookup table for keys to ASCII characters. Oh, maybe it was that I, I would make a version that actually returns something about uh, key, uh, the actual key codes being pressed and whatnot. But for this simple version, 
uh, we will just go straight from key to ASCII character, and that is all. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. So uh, let's do the same thing. For this assembler, we have to declare this as a segment because uh, it makes our life easier on the uh, um, assembly programming side for the 6502 to just align this at a um, 256. Well, it's, it doesn't really matter, but I would... I'm nervous enough about my knowledge of what weird stuff happens when you wrap across page boundaries in some 6502 addressing modes, which a page on a 6502 is a 256-byte chunk of memory. Um, some addressing modes do weird things when you go across boundaries, so I just want to make sure that this lookup table is aligned to the beginning of one of those pages uh, so that I don't even have to worry about it. To do so, that's what this segment thing is about, because... Basically, this says, hey, I have this chunk of data or code or whatever, and uh, the linker, because this is a whole, this is, I'm using, uh, what is it, CC65? Is that what it's called? CA65 and CC65? It's actually a, a C compiler suite for uh, the 6502, uh, but I'm just using the assembler for it. But so it has a whole linker and everything, and to do, like, aligned things, I had to say, uh, you have to declare a segment that says this chunk of code is a segment, and then when you go to link it, you say, take this segment and put it into, into the ROM image aligned somewhere on this boundary, and it takes care of that bit. So slightly more complicated than just, like, writing dot align in the assembler, but whatever. And uh, so I'm going to have to also uh, make a section for this in the linker script. But So we'll just call this uh, E lookup table which is how we will refer to it in the linker script. And then we will also add a label, doesn't matter that these match, called the lookup table. And let us review the keyboard makers. So my general thought here is scanning through here, I don't think I really need to pay attention to what row and column I'm on. Um, I might need to for like the looping or the, you know, changing column purposes so that I know when to latch again. But if I just use one of the registers, like X or if I use like X to keep track of what column I'm on and if I need to, uh, you know, shift to the next column, which I, I might even be able to like use some bitwise arithmetic, just be like, use the same thing. And if the low bytes you know, meet a certain threshold that we need to switch to the next column. But anyway, I think basically if I just keep one variable as a counter, um, I can basically address these keys like linearly. And as I go through each of the columns and switch the rows, it'll just be like they're laid out next to each other. And that will match this lookup table. So I can say the nth key is the nth character. And I, I think that will just like work okay is my thought. Um, but let's start building this lookup table. So doodly doodly do. I have to remember that I'm going to be starting at column two and wrapping back around to column one. So um, this lookup table, I mean, it's just going to be the characters, right? So we'll start at column two, row one. And uh, I think for this, I, like, I'm not going to support shift or anything. Um, People will mostly just be typing in all uppercase um, and numbers, I guess. Uh, let's let's see where we can get with this. Um, so for starters, let us... Oh, and there is a thing from the other day where I am always going to be off by a clock. The data that is clocked in trails which clock I am on as far as, like, clocking through, shifting in the, the bits from the keyboard uh, by one, which is, I'm going to have to pay attention to that. Um, basically, when I do a clock, the data for that was read in on that clock is going to be available from the NES on the next clock. Got to be aware of that. Anyway, start with the lookup table. So it's going to be, um, I think I'll just write down these values and put formatting around. And we'll just go with all uppercase for the moment. Hey. No, I don't need autocomplete right now. Thank you. Hey. Uh, probably 
side by side these, and it would make my life way easier. There we go. I'm a genius. Uh, K J H. Um, huh. I'll just try and remember that that's it. Uh, P O. I U Y uh, I think I think I can do that but I'm not sure you know what uh, this is gonna be such a relatively small thing uh, and I will just remind myself that we're gonna call this zero XP um, or rather because we're doing 6502 assembly, dollar sign zero uh, for new line or carriages or, or whatever. Um, cool. Next column zero. You know what? I'll do the same thing here too, because space is hex twenty. All right. So and then I'll fix it up in a minute. Uh, zero nine eight seven six. And then I think nothing, so I don't know. Nothing. Then Z. Thank you, autocomplete. X. C. V. B. Same thing where I think it's, I'll just put nothing for right now. I mean, I don't, there's no key there. It's not a pressable key, so I don't think I even have to worry about it. Uh, A, S, D, F, G, like I said, I won't be using shift right now, so nothing, Q, W, P, R, T, control, I will also ignore, for now. One, two, three, four, five. Function we will ignore, and that brings us back around to column one, which I will do slash. Uh, I don't know. This is all kind of arbitrary. Which which character from the keycap I steal? Um, you know what? I know the characters for for period and comma are terrible. The tiles I chose so. I'm going to choose greater than or less than, with which I should be able to type a star. Uh, M, N, and I don't know. Let's go with plus. And that should be basically my table. Now I just have to fix it up so it reads properly. Um, um, let's see. This goes back to remembering how to do these block uh, Vim commands, which I suck at. Because before all of these, I want to insert... Let's see if this inserts before or after. Nope, I obviously have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go cheap, and I'm going to do insert... Uh, dot. Did I put a space on the other ones? Before byte? No, I didn't. So I'm just going to do dot byte and a space and a single quote, and then I'm going to yank that and shoot. How do I put a space before all of these? I can make an indent. I know how to do that. Watch me learn Vim. We're back to an episode of Watch Me Learn Vim. Um, and then I guess for now I can do this and then maybe remove. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, remove the spacing at the beginning when I'm done. Uh, I could probably use the block insert command at this point, huh? Now that I have some space. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can if I can block paste. Hey, you totally can. Um, and then let's do block dedent. And 
see if that works for me. Sure, I will take that. That looks like a thing that I would be happy with. So I need to clean up a few things before I slap the ending on these lines, which is going to be uh, like this one. It's going to be 20, not an actual uh, character literal name there. Uh, for the ones that are blank, um, I'm just going to go ahead and replace these with zero, zero. You know, just a literal zero for the moment. There's probably a uh, more sensible thing to do with those, but I am not doing sensible things with the keyboard right now, so bite me. Bite me, assembly. Oh, okay, that was all of them. So now let's put some end quotes on them. Let me see if I can use some uh, super cool regex skills here to make that happen. So let me search for, and you can't see the bottom of my window. That's fun. There we go. Now you can see the bottom of my window, where my, where my super cool vim commands are going to be typed in. So uh, percent %s for regex replace, and I'm going to do, yo, percent %s forward slash dot, byte, space, single quote, yeah, that's fine, and then uh, anything, any number of times, because I want to put that in a capture group, anything, any number of times, and that is it, I want to replace that with dot, Single quote. Shoot, how do you do this? Can you insert capture groups this way? That would not be great if I can't do that. Uh oh. Because, like in most systems, if you do dollar sign and the number of the capture group, it will be replaced by the value in that capture group. But apparently, not in this case. Okay, I'm just going to type these. I don't feel like wasting time, and this should not be the Watch Me Run Vim channel. That will be another channel. And then when I'm done with this, we will do a check-in on chat. Oh, actually, I will, I will add this to the uh, linker, make sure it all builds. And then... Yay! All done. And let me count really quick, too, because I should know how many... Well, actually, it's easy to figure out how many things are in this matrix, because it's just one multiplied by the other. Oh, you know what I'm going to have to do here really quick, too? Actually, is I... If I want to make this as easy on myself as possible, what I'm not including is that there is a virtual row on here. That's the one that is the uh, sense that I am on column zero bit. So actually for every six of these, I need to add a, an empty entry. So like here after space, byte. Again, I'm just gonna insert zeros in here. Whoa. Uh, one, two, three. Well, why don't I just look at the screen? So after enter, add another one after this empty key, add another one after this empty key, add another one after the empty key for shift, add another one after the empty key for control, add another one, and after the empty key for function, add another one, back around to row one, and uh, just for good measure, after, after the plus key, there will also be a one. So that way I can just scan through, and those are virtual keys that will never be pressed, mm -hmm, except for uh, on Column zero, they will always be pressed. Ah. Hmm. Or, sorry, column one. I'm not zero indexing those anymore in my head. So 
So actually, let me undo that. Let me go ahead and undo that because uh, that would otherwise be nice and clean if it weren't for the fact that that bit was is always set, and I would need to handle that um, for the row uh, for the column one. So I guess in my code I will just like have to. Well, I mean I'll just not even read it. Like when I hit when I've read in six values, just latch and go to the next thing. And not that I won't increment the thing that is counting through this this lookup table. Yeah. Okay, so that means let us go to my link.config script and we will add uh, what did I call it? P L U T, is that what I called it? And then I will do just the same thing we did. Character lookup table. And load into PRG memory, which is the only memory we have basically the ROM chip. Type is read-only memory, and it, let's see, we don't have a start, we just have an align. So we align, uh, same thing. I think this is saying align at 128 byte boundary, um, but that's whatever. That's fine. That's good enough for me. Um, Right, and then how many how many keys do we actually have was where I was going before I got sidelined by that virtual row question. Um, so we have 8 by 6, which is 48. Um, so we have 48 keys. So that's just that's just good to know. Um, so when my when my key clocking in loop hits 48, then we are done when I get to that code. Is how that works. So let me write that up. And run the run the build script and see if it explodes. And if it doesn't, then I'm gonna go look at death. First time I run it for some reason it takes forever. Okay, chat. I see that there is much going on here, and like I should move this TV somewhere else so that I can like read you guys when I'm working. But sorry, this is the way it is. Um, so let me review. Cliff Cheney says, wow, finally got into the stream early. It was so late yesterday, I missed the whole board build. I mean, did you really want to watch me solder for an hour and a half? But now you just get to look at this, at this, at this cutie little board. Look at that. It's done. And I think it even works. Uh, Wigworm said, add a second variable for remembering the status of shift control and function. Um, I think it will pay off to keep scanning for them, even if you plan to only hold one press normal key. You're probably right about that, and it would be relatively trivial to add that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see how I feel. We'll see, maybe we'll see how, uh, if I have like a bunch of time left over in this first stream of the day, um, and like my initial bare bones implementation of uh, key reporting is done, then maybe I'll, I'll go ahead and do that because it would be not too hard to, to add on to the side. Um, but like, you're right. If I'm going to make this uh, uh, um, like guest book system for people at the show, uh, having being able to put in punctuation, probably not the worst idea. Um, Stephen Wright says, did the perf board solve the dicky counting? Yeah, it looks like it resolved that. I mean, I haven't super double-checked, but uh, so far everything looks okay. We're really going to find out, because I'm kind of flying by the seat of, the, of my pants with that. I plugged some things into the logic analyzer and then kind of whiffed it the other day and then meh, said whatever. Uh, it seems to be okay. But if we start doing this keyboard scanning and keys show up weird, uh, we're going to have to go back into looking at that. But I think so. Um... Yeah, Stephen Wright says you might need shift to do basic. Oh, most definitely I will need shift to do basic, but I'm not I'm not implementing basic for the show next weekend, so. Um, has anyone told him about multiple cursors, alt control, and VS code yet? No. Um, apparently one of my one of my uh, coworkers at work was telling me about this, like it was something everyone knew, which I find very embarrassing because I'm the guy who not that I'm very good at it, but um, you know, taught myself the basics of Vim. And I don't know about multi-cursors and stuff in uh, VS Code, so, yeah. Uh, maybe we will play with that. Uh, man, new people, I think. Octavio Augusto says, GG. Thank you. Uh, Tip says, hey, how's it going? It's going good. 
so far. I mean, we've only been at it for, uh, geez, that first half hour blows by. We've been at it for 35 minutes, and I have made a uh, lookup table. Amazing. And then Dirt Piper says, when do we get to the quick brown fox? Uh, hopefully in four hours or less. Uh, Wearworm said, sometimes the VARs and regex are not dollar sign one, etc., but slash one. Yeah, I mean, I, I just have to look it up in the VIN key bindings. Uh, documentation here. But I don't want to. Maybe if we need to do that again, I'll, I'll revisit it. Okay, um, actually, before I get back to this, let me crack the Red Bull. Yes, I feel its power coursing through my veins. And back to this. So let us start. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to start scanning and see what happens. So... Um, I created an entry point for this subroutine, and I believe uh, for testing code, really, what we should be doing is why not just, um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll debug print uh, in the keyboard code, because I was going to say why not just, uh, like, make a loop that keeps printing the results of git key here we go um but no i don't want to do that so right now the the halt loop uh that is the code that the processor is just going to keep running for forever is going to call my git key routine which currently just returns and then just loop over again so over in git key i am going to uh maybe stick to using um zero page values for some stuff because if I'm going to call I'm, I'm mainly just trying to, de to decide because git key is just going to return whatever the ASCII character was in uh, the accumulator so that I can then just like print it or whatever um, so I'm trying to decide if I want to just do JSR git key then immediately JSR uh, print character and then keep looping and use that as the basis of my uh, build debug, write build debug loop here. And maybe, because that just means that I can, in git key, I'd really like to just be able to use x and y and not use a bunch of zero page values or mess with the stack or anything. Um, ideally, because that's a pain in the butt. So I think I'll just do this and then we will we will put things into A that are useful. And that's how we will debug as we go. So I think, for starters, let's, let's just scan. I was going to say let's scan one row of keys, but that doesn't really make any sense because I have no way of, every, every time I like reset the, uh, the parallel in shift register to load the values from the keyboard, it it automatically uh, also moves to the next column. So uh, we're just going to have to deal with that. <laughs> but uh, I guess let's start by I'm going to use x as my um, as my row count. So maybe I'll start by loading a literal seven in there. And then I'm going to use Y as my, um, like, character index into the, uh, the lookup table that we just made. Um, and hmm. so when we do get key, maybe let's start by just constantly scanning, looking up whatever's in the lookup table and always returning it. So, like, we're going to print stuff pretty pretty flippin' fast, but we should see some output as I press keys, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe let's start there. So, let's just start by setting that latch. 4016. 
And I think doing this as a separate step, kind of like we did in the initialization, is kind of fine since we're gonna... I, like, we don't care about that first bit that we clock in anyway, because it looks like we're always going to be behind by a bit. So I think that's fine. I think I don't really care. We'll find out real fast, I think. Uh, so... Oh, sorry. That is actually... I want to load a literal one and then store it into 4016 to set the latch. And then now the latch is high. If I load, load a from 4016, that will clock the controller and read me in a bit, which I think I don't care about. Um, yeah, I think this is easier when I don't really need to, I was, I was worrying all day, well, all end of day yesterday about do I, you know, try and keep like my counts right between what key I'm on and uh, the number of clocks I've done. But I think it kind of won't matter the way that I'm about to do it. Because I'm not really keeping track of what key I'm on, but beyond incrementing Y. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so we do that, then let's lower the latch again, so we've, uh, we've moved on. If we just did a reset, or previously did a scan, uh, we will have just moved on to column two, and by doing this, by doing this latch and clock. So, now we begin, firstly let's lower the latch, uh, load a zero zero. Store it into the latch register. Cool. And now we will start a loop. Um, let's see. Clock keyboard bit loop. And in this loop, we will just, I mean, basically this loop from initializing the keyboard, except that we will care about, well, we will increment, increment move this down here. We will decrement x and we will increment y and we will actually check what uh, the value of the bit is. And if it is zero, then we will return whatever is in the lookup table. Maybe. Oh boy! Let's just write some stuff. So uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, clock in a bit. So mm. wait. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> I think, I think I am doing things wrong with that leading trailing clock versus data thing. But I'm just gonna go for it. And if we're leading and trailing, then we should just kind of be off by a character, and then we will re revise. Um, so let us load a uh, 4016, which will clock a bit in from the hardware, which is going to be off by one, potentially. But I'm not going to think too hard about that right now. And then we will... Um, at what point should I increment y and decrement x? Well, I want to increment y after we have checked the key, because like if we're on the zeroth button, we want to get the zeroth thing out of the table. So we got to do that after all of this. So load a, which might be off by a bit, uh, and then and. Uh, with literal a one as we've done many a time, and branch if it was. Uh, let's do branch if it wasn't zero, which would mean that the key was not pressed down. Um, to like just uh, uh, I guess back to the top or no to like finish this loop. So, um, if it was not zero, then we'll make a label. Um, Continue KB bit. Um, and let's make that label right here. Continue KB bit loop. And what we will do 
in that case is, um, I think, decrement x. Uh, and if uh, it hits zero, so branch uh, equal. I'm thinking I might actually want to load this with a six. We'll find out. Uh, branch equal if it hits zero. Hmm. Okay, so this is for the, the just the bit loop. So if it was not zero, then we just want to jump back to the uh, top of the, the loop here. So clock bit kb bit loop. Uh, so we decrement x, uh, and if it was not zero yet, then we just go back up here and clock in the next bit. Um, otherwise, uh, we will need to do the figuring out if we are, because uh, I also have to keep track of what, well, no, do I have to keep track of what column I'm on? No, because I can just use, I'm using Y to keep track of what, like, key I'm on as far as, like, linearly indexing through the keys. So if we just check after we get out of here every time, if we're at the end of the keys, that's when we can exit this whole thing. Anyway, so back up here, that's the case in which we checked the, the, the next bit. Uh, it was not set. Then we just jump ahead and continue this loop. Otherwise, uh, in the case that it was zero, um, you know what I'll do just for now? And then we can revise. This isn't going to tell us much, but it is going to tell us that it's, it's doing something about reading keys. In the case for right now, that it did encounter a key being pressed. Um, I was going to say, like, let's just return, you know, uh, the same value every time. But, like, is it that much? No, let's not, let's not fly too close to the sun. We'll just return the same value every time. So it won't return anything. Uh, like, we'll just return zero, which is a non-printable character, uh, if we didn't have a key pressed down. If we did have a key pressed down, of some sort, then we'll like return. Uh, here, let's load a a literal. I think we have the exclamation point in our character set. I think that eh, we'll see something print. Um, so if it does a scan and some key is held down, then it will say it will say the key was an exclamation point. And then if there is nothing we need to do to clear up. We will just exit this subroutine now. Uh, the one thing that we are also not doing in here is incrementing y. So let's make sure that we always increment y. Um, yeah, maybe let's do that. We can do that in between these steps because uh, we don't want it to. We don't want it to affect the flags here. But I also don't want to have to write it in multiple uh, areas of the branch. So let's increase y here. And let's see. So either way. So yeah, if we if we encounter something pressed down, we exit right away. Um, but if we don't, yeah, there's probably like alternative stuff that we need to do here later. But for right now, I think it's okay to just only care about going on to the next column at this point. So if we have gotten to the end of this column, if we've read through all the rows on this column, then uh, we, I guess, need to first check. Um, yeah, let's transfer Y into A, which is keeping track of what button we're on. And uh, we probably need to add an extra clock here to skip. No, we don't even need to add an extra clock to skip anything because we'll just not read the seventh virtual row here. So it doesn't matter. Um, we'll just not do it. So we will put Y into A and I guess check to see if it's 48 because at this point it would have gone from... Uh, oh, actually, this, this doesn't work here, does it? Because when we do get to looking up a character here, we will be... Off by one. Can't do it there. Okay, never mind. We'll just do it in both legs of this branch. So later we'll have to do it here, but 
Okay, so here we'll always increase y. Uh, we will decrease x. Um, and then here. Oh, yeah. So when we are, when we have fallen out of this loop, let us load a, uh, our literal six again and uh, transfer a, or no, we can just load x directly. What am I doing? Load x, so reload it here. Then put y into a and do a compare uh, with literal 48 um, and branch if not equal. So branch if y hadn't hit 48 yet. Uh, two, I think just the top of get key again. Let's see. No, because we don't want to reload y with zero. But I think right after, because yeah, then that does the, the toggling to the next column, blah, 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 blah. Um, reloads x. So actually, I don't think I even need to do that, because we will do that at the top of the next iteration of the loop. So we will just transfer y into a, see if it was 48. If it was not 48, then we go back to this guy, which is uh, next keyboard uh, column loop. And we will get an infinite loop if uh, my math is off here and we don't actually ever hit 48 on any of these iterations. But uh, that's a problem for future Joe. And finally, uh, should we fall out of this loop, should it hit 48 and we didn't encounter any pressed down keys during that time, then let us load, let's make sure that there is a zero in A and then return the color. So if this is written more or less right, which is a big ask, um, this initial revision should uh, scan through things until it hits the end of the keys. And if any point in there we have a key pressed down while it is scanning, it will print an exclamation point. Otherwise it will just return a zero. And this will be constantly happening. There's nothing in here that is looping until it detects a key. Uh, it will exit after the end of scanning every time. So the idea here is it'll just keep returning zeros if it scans through the, all the keys and doesn't see a single key held down. And if it does see a key held down, it'll keep printing exclamation points until I remove my finger from that key. Right? Is that reasonable? So it won't tell us what key we actually had held down, but it will show us that, um, and I can like run through all of the keys, uh, except that... Um, our control shift and function also won't actually return anything. Or no, they will. They will right now because we're not actually looking up into the table. So any key theoretically on here except for the alpha lock key should cause exclamation points to get printed through the screen. Should. If this is even close to being right. So, uh, just checking really quick. Cliff Cheney said, I have a Vim user. Vim, Vim user and watching you is the most I have seen of VS Code. Um, I just like like the convenience features of... Nope, I am not in my editor. But that did build, right? Uh, I like the, the convenience features of, of VS Code, and I like the keeping my fingers on the home row of Vim. And I found the combination to be uh, nice for me. Though I, I am also perfectly fine with using using Vim just directly in the console. Uh, that's just some when I'm like when I'm writing C sharp code, which is what I do for my day job, uh, being in VS Code and also having like IntelliSense and uh, like lookup definition and stuff, that mixed with uh, the Vim key bindings makes me I'm not going to say super fast because that's an absolute term. Uh, makes me significantly faster. Okay, let's build that three total times for no good reason. And 
burn it. Because if I try and run this on an emulator, for the emulator, it always reports uh, a 1. So that doesn't work for me, because that will... I mean, I guess if I run it on the... You know you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's load it in the emulator. I think it should just constantly print... Uh, it should constantly print exclamation points, I think. Yeah, cool. Because uh, for, for whatever reason, it always returns... Uh, it always returns one... No, it always returns zero. Yeah, because I just had zeros on the screen that you just saw. It always returns zero. On the, on the emulator, with no buttons on it, which, you know, matches the hardware theme. Okay, so that looks promising, I think. Let's go ahead and pause that, I guess. And, yes, yes, this looks right. Let us program. Grab the thing from the thing, sing a song, because that's what the people want. Unplug the doodad. Get the tweezers. Yank the thing out. Break your creations. Creations. Oh, did I tell you that I used to do music? Uh, I don't even want to say semi-professionally. <laughs> you have to make any kind of money to be semi-professional. Actually, no, that's not true. We had one show that people came to, and uh, we made like a hundred bucks each. And that is the extent of my professional uh, music career. So maybe now I just uh, make, I sing low effort songs so as to, because now there's no pressure, so it feels good. So I just make them bad, as bad as possible. It's all psychological. Okay, thing is in the thing. Let me, uh, I think I have my NES screen somewhere over here. Is that you? Is it? Well, maybe. Could be. Uh, where shall I put you? Because I want you to be able to see my keyboard. I guess it's less important that you see the NES than it is that you see the keyboard. Um, go for it. <laughs> okay. Don't love that, so it is seeing exclamation points every time. Oh, interesting. But they go twice as fast when I hold down a key. Or am I making that? No. I'm not making that up, right? It does, it seems way faster when I press down a key. Am I going insane? Uh, alpha lock is for, I don't really know. Maybe people who do TI-99 4A stuff would know. Okay, so there's definitely something slightly wrong with my code because... It is printing exclamation points when I press down a key. It's just doing it at like twice the speed. It shouldn't be printing any exclamation points uh, normally. So that's interesting. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely faster. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's way faster. So it's doing something. <laughs> Maybe I... Let's go over to the emulator and uh, maybe do some debugging to see what it's thinking it's doing. Maybe. Uh, see why in here... Well, like, in here, it would on the emulator, because it always returns zeros, it, it would always be printing exclamation marks. The question is, why is it printing exclamation marks at all on here? I don't have a good answer. Um, let's let's just look at the code and see what code paths would what would cause this to print an exclamation mark, even if it doesn't have a key pressed down. Um, hmm. 
So theoretically, if I have no keys pressed down, like this is the only code path that returns an exclamation point, right? However, I say however as if I have like something in mind, but I don't actually mind. I was hoping that something would come to mind via me saying however. Uh, F it. Let's just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement the lookup uh, in the, uh, in the doodly do in the table, the lookup table that we just wrote. I'm going to implement that part and see what it prints when I do that. Um, because that might give me some hints as to what key it thinks is always pressed down. It might be, it could totally be that, uh, my, my clocks are off here and it is because it is because of like the columns uh, column one stuff like it sees the column one bit and it goes oh hey um, maybe but regardless uh, yeah let's go ahead and do that so what we need to do is just like our Printing command. We need to actually load a. Let's see. I forget what the syntax for that mode is. So let's just look at the video code. Uh, not that one. Shoot. I think I need to use X, which is kind of fine with the way this is written right now, because I can just like move Y over into X. But oh, I can just switch which one. Where is, that's my scrolling code. I don't care about my scrolling code. I care about, oh, here comes my character code. I have scrolled too far. In this print character code, there is, oh, right here. Load a character lookup table, comma x. We need to do the same thing. And of course, like I thought, it is, it is x. So uh, let me just swap x and y code to make my life easier. So here, <laughs> replace, uh, load y, increase x, decrease y, transfer x into a, and I think that's all of it. Then subsequently, load a, we call this key lookup table? Yes, comma x. And that should be the entirety of it. Let's see what the emulator does now. I am very curious. I mean, the emulator should always just like print, like, if I'm thinking about this right, and the code is working the way that I think it should be, which is tenuous. Uh, it should always print a uh, semicolon because it should get a zero on that very first one and be like, aha, that is the key that is pressed down. It's the first key because it thinks the key is always pressed down. Okay, so it prints nothing, which is kind of, oh, no, 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 it's paused. Don't pause. Uh, yeah, I, that's my semicolon. That's my semicolon character. That is my beautiful semicolon character. Because it turns out Super Mario Bros. 3 doesn't have a uh, semicolon anywhere. So that's what we have. So that that follows my logic of it just always thinks the semicolon is held down. Um, but let's see what this does on real hardware. Because that's the real question is, uh, this shouldn't ever see a button pressed down until we press a button down. Uh, yet it does. So what button is it thinking is pressed down? Let's find out. Take the thing out of the thing. Do the thing. Turn off the thing. Do 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 do. Uh, Where Worm said I googled it. Yeah, Alpha Lock is shift locked. Uh, interesting. I I should buy another TI ninety nine four someday. I really should. 
they are very, I, I find that they seem like very interesting machines. Totally different, weird processor than anybody else uses. Because it's, you know, made by TI. And weird kind of 16-bit architecture, which I mean, immediately, if the architecture is a little weird, you know I'm into it. And yeah, for those reasons. And I think the I think the CPU in the TI-994A is like a single chipized version of their uh, 70s mini computer series, because TI made mini computers in the 70s. 60s and 70s. And so that also seems very cool to me. Mini computer on a chip. Um right, let's program. Back, reload. Get the stuff. Address 1000, 10,000. Program the doodle doo. There we go. Here it is. Very good. I'm proud of you. What mysteries do you have in store for us, oh, weird Baji hardware? That is comma. I wonder if this is a hardware issue. Um, Cause I, I'm pretty sure that's the character I chose. No, no, no. I think I think I actually have a comma character. Which character is that? I don't know. But it might be. Uh, Prussian Kamikaze uh, joins the chat saying, Guten Tag, fellow nerd. Hello. Uh, is that a custom cart? It's, uh, it's a Super Mario Brothers 3 cart that has been, has, has had horrible macabre surgery done to it. Um, okay, let's see if my scanning is even remotely right. Huh. Interesting. That seems... All kinds of screwy. Uh, it does seem to be one. Wait. Let's let me look at the at the keyboard matrix. So I'm pressing R, and it is printing an E. Um, and E is, yeah, R is the key right after E. So I'm definitely having an off by one situation because if I press W, which is the one before that, uh, it prints a. Oh, sorry, wrong one. If I press a, if I press E, we get. W, if I press R, we get E. There we go. If I press T, we get R. That's what I was going for. So, yeah, it seems, I mean, we, we have a weird issue with, let me see if that, is, is that comma? No, I did greater than or less than on these ones. Um, yeah, so we're off by one, but I think it's generally, right. especially the fact that it's reliable. It is reliably uh, you know, every time I press down R, I'm getting E. So that means that, like, my my counting through the rows is consistent, which is good, which is very good. Um, why we are getting that character, though, every time is a fun mystery. So I can't remember, I can't remember which one that is. So, interesting. So space should print nothing, and it does kind of in that nothing happens. Um, and enter the key right before enter is Y. So, um, oh, so presumably I can't print anything in the last row. Hmm. Right now. Right, because I'm not reading it. So we do need to address this off by one issue. We need to address two things. The off by one in, uh, issue and the why is it doing this issue. But the cool thing is otherwise, like that's a working thing. Um, we want it to only send, we want it to basically detect key press so that like when you put a key down, 
uh, it doesn't keep sending the same key on every cycle, which I think is actually going to be really easy to implement. Uh, but that's kind of cool because that means, like, if we fix those two problems, like, this is done, <laughs> which is cool if you really think about it. Um, ah, okay, so the first keys in the row don't do anything. One is the first key on the last column, so that makes sense. That's the off by one thing. <laughs> I've invented the TV typewriter. Yes, Dirt Piper. Uh, I think you came in a little a little late on the stream. Uh, I was saying exactly that. I'm just making a really expensive thing. But anyway, let me just make sure that besides the off by one thing, like all the keys are doing stuff. So uh, going through uh, column by column, let's start at column one. So slash shouldn't do anything, but then the subsequent key is greater than which would be slash, and the next key is less than, which would be greater than, which is one like the star, which makes sense. M is greater than, less than, whatever the other one is, uh, which is correct. N prints M, the previous one, cool. And then plus or minus prints N, the previous one. That is right. And then next column. Uh, first key doesn't do anything, that would be semicolon, then L should print semicolon, yep, that's my weird semicolon character, K should print L, J should print K, H should print J, and space should print H, uh, but my last keys don't do anything because we're not counting that high. Okay, next row, P should do nothing, O should print P, yes. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I should print O, yes it does, U should print I, yes it does, Y should print U, yes it does, uh, enter, won't do anything, um, Z doesn't do anything, that's the first one, next column, uh, X should print Z, C should print X, V should print C, V should print V, and then there's nothing at the end of that. Uh, next column, A won't do anything. S should print A. D should print S. F should print D. Okay, so maybe there's... Oh, wait. The fuck? Okay, that might be related to our hardware issue. That does nothing. And that is probably due to... So, note to everybody, the F key might be screwed up uh, with my solder fix jobs on the back. We'll have to check. But that could be potentially related to why it's doing that. Anyway, moving on, where was I? Uh, the next key is G, which should print F. Very good. And then that's the end of that. Uh, next column, Q should do nothing, but then W should print Q. Uh, which is fascinating, because, like, this one in E, too, it also just, like, stops the printing. Possibly because of column stuff, and it's causing the code to do weird things. I don't know. We will review the solder job on the back of this keyboard. Uh, e should print W, which it does, and then also does kind of the same thing. Very interesting. I wonder if it's related to, uh, um, is it like printing a, an enter? Does it think the enter key is pressed when it does this and causing it to go back to the beginning of the line every time? I could believe that. Um, sure that print does nothing for character zero zero code? Yes. 100% sure. Because um, you see, it gets to the end of the line, prints a W, and then keeps printing Ws at the beginning of the thing. So that leads me to think that something about this is causing the D key to appear pressed down uh, some of the time, or the enter key, which becomes a hex, hex D, which I think is probably a carriage return, which causes it to go to the beginning. Interesting. Anyway, uh, R should print E. It does. Still does that weird thing, though. 
Uh, T should print R, but it still does. That's the end of that row. And then finally, last column. Everything is looking great except for, you know, the obvious things that are broken. Um, one should do nothing. Two should do one. Uh, yeah, see, because it's like, you know what I didn't really think about? Oh. See, again, this is interesting because it looks like it's getting a one and a space, a one and a space, a one and a space, a one and a space. What's up with that, huh? Um, fascinating. I wonder if that's similar to the, the enter key thing with the previous row. Hmm. Seems regular enough to be fixable. Okay. Uh, three should print two. Four should print three. Five should print four. And that's it. That's all the keys. Uh, okay, so neat, neat, neat. Um, Stephen Wright says, can you load fake values into the sim that represents the uh, quirt column? Uh, not easily. Because uh, it's, the, it's the controller emulation code in the emulator that sends back uh, the, the, you know, virtual um, bit values. And... So I couldn't just like set the value of some register in memory. Um, I would have to change the code of the emulator. Um, okay, so here's the deal. I have to take a P. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick pause. I will be back in five. Hi, I'm back. Uh, I just wanted to check really quick because Prussian Kamikaze had said something about an NES question. Okay, I have an NES question. Is the only reason the NES is bigger compared to the Famicom is because they did it to appeal to Americans, or is there actually a major board difference? Uh, they are functionally identical, yeah, as far as I know. Um, there are some physical differences, but functionally they are identical. Uh, I believe, my understanding is that it's bigger because the uh, due to the video game crash, this is what I have heard. Mind you, I am not a, a Nintendo executive. What I heard was that because of the video game crash, Nintendo of America was, well, basically none of the people that Nintendo was trying to sell to in America wanted a video game console because they were failing in the market at the time. And uh, Nintendo knew they could sell those things because it was doing gangbusters in uh, Japan. And so their strategy that they developed was make it not a video game console, which is why it doesn't say anything about video games in the description of the NES. It is the Nintendo Entertainment System. It is a home entertainment system. It is not a video game. And uh, anyway, all of that leads to, so they changed the design definitely to appeal to uh, North America and they wanted to make it look 
not like a video game system, which is a thing that you put a cartridge in the top of, like an Atari. So that's why they actually made it look like a VCR, was why they have the weird front-loading thing. So I assume the size is really that they wanted to make it look more like a, a piece of home video equipment, like a VCR. They didn't want it to look like a video game console. That's my understanding. That's what I heard. How true that is, I don't know. All right. So where do I start with this damn thing? Let's, I'm going to just look at the hardware and see uh, what's going on with that F key because that makes me feel like it is a hardware issue with the key matrix, not like something weird with this because it's all consistent otherwise. Um, so yeah. So where is the F key? Where are you hiding? So F key is here and the F key is on... Let me see. It is on column three. So that's the column shared with A, S, D, and G. Um, and I just, do I see anything immediately weird about it? Now, there's a lot of, like, this is just an old keyboard, so there, there's trace gunk in here. But does it look like I did anything weird or bridged anything? Or let me just... Let me just check that I didn't do anything funky. So for the column, which is the bit that is connected to all the common keys, G, D, S, A, like I said. So that's G, that's F. This trace you can see is, is the column trace. I have F bridged to D where it was cut right here. That goes over to S, which is correct. S goes over to A, which again, I'm just bridging the same connection that exists there uh, and that is on the same column so cool and then there is a jumper which unfortunately I can't really I, I assume it jumpers over over from here to here based on the wires but you know what I could do to figure that out is use a multimeter I could certainly do that oh I guess there's another thing that I can check really quick as well which is, uh, do, oh, another thing that I can change is change my counting logic in the code so that everything is uh, offset the way it needs to. But anyway, so if these are connected, they are. So this jumper is to here. And that goes to, interesting, that goes to H. Hmm, did I connect to the wrong side of A? No, because this trace goes right over to A. But H is, where is H on this keyboard matrix? H is, H is on column two. Oh no, that's shift, it's SH. <laughs> you can't read it, probably. <laughs> I just saw H. It's shift, which is definitely, it is definitely on that column. Okay, that's the same. This wire just goes around to the connection on the uh, pluggy do. Okay, then it goes through shift, which is correct. Then it comes down around here, around here, around here, goes through another jumper to the other shift, which is interesting. Um, there are two shifts, but like one, only one is labeled. So that's funky, but yeah, so the jumper is over here goes to one side of the other shift button. I mean, maybe it's just the same key. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Both shift keys are attached to that column. That's all we know. And there is where it ends. Um, so if we trace this all the way back here, yeah, it goes from here all the way through to here. Looks fine on the column. Let's look at the row. Um, -doo -doo -doo, that is row, that is the row shared with MJU7B. Anyway, it's the other side. So this is F, that was the column side of F. Here is the row side of F. And that goes to R, just fine. This all, this is all actually connected, perfectly fine. Um, goes to, is that four? Yeah, that is four, that is connected just fine. And that is where that side of the column, or the row wire ends, the row trace. 
Then it comes down here, connects to V. There are no cuts there. That is fine. Uh, goes over to M, which is correct. That is connected, which is fine. And then how did it get? Oh, goes back up again. Um, interesting. So there is a cut here. There is a cut right there, but it's still connected. I have a wire going from U to J, which U is on that row. So I think that's fine. And it shows continuity for it there. And then continuing on from there, it goes to U. That's fine, I think. And that goes up to seven. That's fine, I think. And then that just goes, yep, that's all the keys for that column. And then it just goes back to the connector. So I don't immediately see how that could, like, why F wouldn't work unless the key is just jacked up. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let's see if, for whatever reason, like, do we get bleed from F over into some of the other keys that were acting weird? Like, if we look at the continuity between F and, I don't know, No, nothing really interesting. What about continuity between F and like Q? Nothing particularly interesting. Hmm. So there doesn't really appear to be like, especially for F, for that particular key where it was just straight up not doing anything. Um, it doesn't look immediately like a keyboard matrix prompt. So one would have to think software. And one thing I want to check really quick is, did I have, surely, let's just like check the obvious thing and make sure in my lookup table there actually is an F in there. There is, right after D. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Is it a bad switch? That's a thing we can check real quick. Um, just to just to rule that out, let's make sure the F switch isn't like just hasn't just gone bad. So if I check between these two pins, should be no continuity. Find the freaking F key. Okay, if I press the F key down. I check continuity. There is no continuity. So I think the F key is boned, which is annoying, but maybe if I get some contact cleaner in there and stuff, we can fix that up. So F key looks like it's just dead. That solves that mystery. Um, yeah, I actually saw the uh, needle bounce just now as I was pressing it. So I think if we work that one out a little bit, put some contact cleaner in it, hopefully that will get better. But it looks like it's just dead. Uh, let's check, for example, D right there next to it. And that makes the needle swing like crazy. So that key is not working. Good. That solves that mystery. Now the mystery of why we're, like, getting double scanned keys. So first, let me... Let me do something. Let me take you back to the code for a second. So, uh, adjusting my counting. Um, we'll figure out the uh, double double key thing in a second, but uh, let's just focus first on the everything being off by one deal. So, where is my code? Here's the code. There's any keyboard. Here is a git key. Um, so. Do, 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 do. What if we... Hmm. So, we appear to just be losing that first key, which then indicates to me that, that maybe that off by one thing that I was seeing was actually a figment of the code that I had written before. Because that would mean that Potentially, we should be getting a value at this point when we do this very first clock. 
um, which is interesting. So, hmm. how do we go back to this world where I just latch on the first clock and but keep it in like the, the regular clocking loop, right? Um, we could do something real stupid, like get rid of all this for a minute, except for the load y6, and then also do uh, load a, ah, no, because we keep replacing a, damn, I was going to do like, load a one here and then in every subsequent iteration of the loop load zero ooh hmm here's a hack okay so what if here i load o1 into a and we do our uh store a 4016 but then on every subsequent inner loop right before we do hmm. hmm shit I want to load a with a different value the next time we enter the loop which we can do but uh, it's gonna be weird because if I do it right here then that upsets my uh, check here so eh. I guess Hmm. What if we do this? It's going to be a little convoluted, but, um... <laughs> do another inner KV loop, worst label of all time. And what I'm going to do here is literally just load A with zero, and then clear carry, branch carry, clear, two, uh, clock, keyboard, bit loop, again. So here, instead of jumping straight to clock, keyboard, bit loop, we'll jump to do another inner keyboard loop, and this will never get hit when the code is flowing through here because we return before it every time. So uh, here, when we need to loop again, we jump up here load a zero zero and then jump up to here haha -ha. so that should accomplish the first time we go through a is one and we put that into the latch and we do our blah -de blah and then we come down here and when we need to do another loop we load zero into it then store that into the latch uh, oh no but this is the bit loop you you damnable fool uh Wait, no, but that that's fine. I mean, it's we're going to be writing to the to the latch register every time, which is a little wasteful. But um we'll only do the uh, the actual setting it to 1 the first time we come through. Or so I feel. So I think that will it'll do something about our off by 1 thing. It should at least change some of the behavior. And there's a paranoid rebuild. Let's just see what that did. Almost used the wrong keyboard again. Oh, give me my cartridge, give me my chip, give me my stuff so I can make a blip on the screen. Yay, yay, we will do that. Uh, also, singing bad songs is a skill that I've had to develop uh, for... Uh, dealing with my my four year old my four year old son my four month old son now so it's not just for you guys you are just getting the side menu. program it up program it good this is what we will do in this neighborhood yay all right let's see what that if anything. Hey, Lawless. Good to see you. And uh, thank you, Wereworm and Cliff Cheney, for the beeps. I, 
I couldn't do continuity testing with that. It's in. Apparently it's not in good enough. Which is rare. I've gotten pretty good at putting this cartridge in. What up, bro? Uh, hopefully I didn't put the chip in backwards. No, I didn't put the chip in backwards. Did I break anything? No, it doesn't look like I broke anything. Hmm, I say. Eh. Bad contents. Um, interesting how it's not printing anything now. Maybe that was related to the off by oneness. Ooh, that's fascinating. Okay, so now it is, the counting is way off. I'm printing, I, I'm pressing two and three. Like, we, we must be off by a column. I would assume. Yeah, let's see, what are two and three? I don't know where anything is. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, two and three are on the same thing as, yep, greater than or less than. So we're definitely off by a column. Um, but it's working more-ish. Let's see. That's kind of cool. I mean, just the fact that it's, uh, so yeah, it was something about that off by one issue that was causing it to print every time, apparently. Uh, cool. Let's test some stuff. So one should print a slash, which it does. Uh, two should print greater than, three should print less than, four should print M, five should print N, yes. And then the function key uh, should actually do nothing, right? Yeah, because if we're looking up in that lookup table properly, uh, well, it doesn't really tell us if we're still clocking in too few things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Hmm. Mm hmm. If this is reliable, we might just be able to fix it by uh, by by changing our lookup table. <laughs> Though it clearly, it clearly is like it's right on when it first starts up. Because let's reset this again. And if I if I press J, it's gonna print a J the first time it prints a J. See, but then then it is off by a column. So okay, yeah, and then it is off by a column. But if we can fix that part, it looks like it's right. And then maybe if I just clock in one more bit. Uh, yeah, because let me check one of the columns that actually does have uh, the only one that has a printable character on the last row is plus or minus. Uh, which is interesting because that prints this thing, which I can't remember what. Oh, that might be my quotes, which is weird. But there's that character that it was printing all the time. And apparently that's... The function key? Because that's the thing that is the previous column. It's a, we're printing the previous column, right? Five should print a... No, five was printing an N, so we're printing the next column. So... Oh! Space? Apparently my space character is wrong. Okay. That explains that, kind of. So it was... It thought space was held down before. Because the, the next column over from this key is the space key. Yeah. So that is that is off for some reason, but that's what's going on there. Interdasting. Uh, but uh, that's neat, because uh, that also means it's it actually is reading our last row. It is. Amazing. So now, literally, the only other problem is after the first keyboard scan, 
we are off by a column. But that's so cool because otherwise it works exactly as expected. So why are we off by a column? Let us see. Let us look. Because, yeah, might be able to end this one quite early, go do some stuff, actually have some day before I have to get to the next segment. Um, and maybe do the next segment a little bit earlier, too, so that I have more brain power in the day to do that one. Um, I, know I, I know I said wereworm. <laughs> wereworm said, is the space bar called Cosmos bar on Russian keyboards? That took me a second. Cosmonauts. Uh, wait, how, how, yeah, because it's, it's cosmonauts versus astronauts. I get what you're going for. Uh, anyway, so our, our off by one thingy with the column, um, that just means that we are, I guess, latching one too many times. Um, is it because of this? We're latching one too many times. Oh, here's a fun thing. If we run the emulator, if things are right, it should always think... Like, this should this should actually still help me test it because it should always think whatever the first key that is on the matrix, which is going to be semicolon. Press it. Right, because it, it was doing that here. Um... But that should also mean it should be right and then wrong, and I can see why. Wait, no, it won't be, because it's not actually doing the hardware. Fuck. Damn it. Oh, well. Well, you can see it. I'm going to let that go for a second, because... Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's just look at chat for a minute. <laughs> totally, totally expected. Um, uh, Prussian Kamikaze said, uh, talking about the, the Famicom versus NES design. Yeah, I knew about the toy marketing, just wasn't exactly sure why they chose the VCR design. Again, that's my understanding. Beep, beep, as I said. Uh, I said hi to Lawless. Uh, Prussian Kamikaze said they had to go. I'm glad that you stopped in at all. Uh, watch more later. Um, Wearworm said, now your lookup table is wrong, the part that should counter the off by one. Yes, but as I was, well, I, you probably said that before I was talking about it, but it's right the first goddamn time. I mean, I guess maybe if we just... Look, I'm here to just make it work. I'm here to just make it work. Maybe I can solve this later. We're here to get things ready for VCF. So you know, you know what? You know fucking what? Mm. Well, I was going to say, like, I could just change the, the keyboard uh, init routine to clock the, to, to clock over by a column one more time. But that, we're still going to get an off by one. It's just going to shift our whole off by one by one column because columns don't get they don't have a way of getting reset like uh, rows do because whenever you do the latch it uh, resets the whole row and resets the shift register but you can't you can't do that for the column counting so even if I do one more in the in the in it then it just pushes the, the off by one to be off by one more in the uh, in the other code so anyway uh, Jacob David Cunningham says add a clear command um, no, <laughs> I will, I will later, um, but for, like, I kind of will have to when we write more software, but that, it's not really keyboard related, so, um, Wearworm says, is the emulator screwy because the seventh bit signal is missing? I was kind of wondering the same thing, um, oh yeah, you might, you I'm not gonna worry about it too much over here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna worry about it because my my whole theory about fixing the uh, or you know seeing what that off by one was about using the emulator 
doesn't work because the off by one is caused by the behavior of the the column switching uh, in this hardware, so it would not manifest in the emulator. So just we'll ignore that. Like it is probably something like that, and it's probably something I don't care about, and it's probably not related to my code. So I'm not gonna. I often have a problem of like doing like chasing down wild goose chase situations like that uh, when I should know better in my professional and hobby career, and I'm not gonna do it. This is a this is a study in me. I guess just ignoring things that might be spurious until they are not spurious. So, why are you off by one? Um, let's do that thing where I literally step through the code, which is the, for anybody who's like, wants to learn programming or is trying to get into programming or is like a junior developer, the best way to debug code is to start by stepping through your code. If you Well, once you get better and you can use your tools and you can kind of start making logical leaps, uh, it becomes less of a thing, but you're still doing it in your head quickly and subconsciously, uh, even, you know, when you're not, even when you get like faster and better and it looks like you're making bigger logical leaps. If you cannot, and it's amazing to me how many newish programmers just can't, which I feel like is someone's really letting you down because if someone isn't teaching you this fundamental thing about programming, then they taught you wrong, basically. If you can't step through your program, if you can't step through the execution of your program without actually running it, you need that skill. It's the number one debugging skill. Uh, everything is totally predictable about all code that's not, you know, like non-deterministic anything or involves randomness. So be able to do that. Number one skill. I just want to share that because I've been amazed by that. So let us do that. Um, so we set x to zero and we are using x. Let me make sure my own memory is refreshed. We are using x as the uh, keyboard lookup deal. So let's, <laughs> let's step through this. 48 keys worth, and um, work out the state of the thing. So we start at button zero, at key zero in our in our lookup table. Subsequently, we put six in Y, which is going to be our uh, number of keys to clock count. Uh, then we put one in A, so that when we then go here, that sets the latch, and then we clock in a bit from the shift register. We check to see if it was pressed down or not. If it was pressed down, um, no, if it was not pressed down, we continue the loop. If it was pressed down, let's follow, let's follow that, because if we press down, uh, over here just to make sure that actually is true. So if we reset this and we press down semicolon, which is should be the very first key that it could encounter. So if the very first key that we press down exhibits this behavior, then we can follow that through. Yes, so it successfully does semicolon, then moves on to slash. So we can, we can use that logic. So in that exact case, uh, we hit here that key was pressed down, and therefore we do not follow this branch. We fall immediately through to looking up whatever x is, which it is currently zero in the lookup table, which is the um, semicolon character. And then we return to sender. Oh, well, yeah. Wait, then how can it be right all of the other times? Because what I'm seeing here is that you know what the issue is, is that we're not continuing to scan the rest of the columns. So there's your problem. Now, I would expect that to make things like rotate constantly in a weird way, as opposed to like being constantly right. So I don't really know. I mean, it, I guess it's just the way that the math is working out here. There's some mod modular arithmetic that you could use to, uh, if, you, if you were good at it, you'd be like, oh yeah, well, it's because of that. Um, but that's got to be it, right? That's like an obvious issue is when we detect the key, 
we don't cycle things over again to make sure we're we're back. Um, there would be more elegant ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is uh, just make a whole nother loop. Um, so before we return, uh, I am going to make a loop here that uh, hmm. what's the best way to do this? If we set, if we like just set a flag somewhere that says, okay, don't check for the key. We know what the key is. Don't do it. Um, but keep doing the clocking stuff in loop until we exit. There's a there's a thought. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the way to go. Like we set a flag, and we add we add a check here. If that flag is set, that means we already found a key. So don't bother returning the key. Maybe at this point what we can do is like we'll always uh, hmm. I was going to say we always store the value like we push it onto the stack and then set the set the flag keep rolling but don't ever push anything back onto the stack if the flag is set and then finally at the end pull it off the stack but that ignores the case of what if we hit the end and the we had a key pressed thing was never set well we can just check that flag again actually right and if the flag if the flag was set which meant we found a key then we pull from the stack and write that or you know just send that result back to the caller but um if the flag was never set then we just return a zero. Okay, let's implement that. So, firstly, let's make a flag. And for this purpose, I will finally, finally, as I keep saying, use a goddamn zero page uh, value. So let's uh, load a zero and then store that into, uh, we will make a name and then we will assign it a address up above. Let's call this, uh, we'll just call it key. Key was found. And make some space behind that. Key was found is going to be at zero. Hey. Now we're back where we were. Okay, so so we stashed that there. So if we get to the end of all this and key was found is still zero, then we got we got problems and we just need to return to zero. Otherwise, um, so now we actually need to use that flag. Here comes that flag. So I guess we can just do that right here. Um, Balls, balls, balls. So we're out of registers. We can use. Hmm. 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 Because I could use the key was found value itself uh, to temporarily stash this. Hmm. And then if it's. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe there's the hack. Okay, follow me on this one here. So we'll we'll actually initialize. Let's rename this to found key. We'll initialize it to ff. Use that as a sentinel value. So let us rename this here too. Key found or found key. And go back to wherever I was. So. We'll initialize it to FF, which is an invalid, there, there is no key that will return FF. So um, that will be our flag. If it's still equal to FF, then we didn't find a key. Uh, but if we did find a key, uh, we will stash it in there, which means that here, uh, 
actually balls. Um, well, still, because we're not, I wouldn't actually be stashing the key value. I would be stashing the uh, index of the key here. Basically, because I, I, I want to do a check here without blowing things up too bad. So, blah. Never mind that cleverness. I'm just gonna have two zero page values. Uh, key was found, like we had. Sim simplify, simplify, key was found, and uh, last KB bit. Oh, we already had that. Can we use that? Where are we stashing that? Oh, we're actually not, we're actually not using that. <laughs> because um, we were using that for our our previous code. So actually, let me I'm just going to shift these around a little bit. But thankfully, since they're all predefined values like this, shouldn't affect our code at all. There we go. Just rearrange them so that they are like actually by each other, and we will reuse this last keyboard bit value uh, for the purpose of. Do we do? We do? Do we do? Right. So we will load the next bit here and then immediately store it to last keyboard bit. And then while that is stashed, it is at this point that we can, because um, we need to, we need to always do this in order to in order to clock the thing. But we don't necessarily know if we need to care about the value. Um, so we'll stash it. Then we will load uh, our flag, which I, yes, I still have that code, good. So we will load the value of key was found, and we will branch if uh, key was indeed found, so non-zero, so branch if not equal, branch if not zero, to uh, whatever our label is going to be where we want to skip all of this stuff. So call it skip look up key and I guess that just means if we are skipping that part we just skip all of this and go straight to do another inner keyboard loop? Is that what I need to do? I think so. So actually, let's, let's do that and hope that's right. So basically, we don't even check to see if the key was pressed, which is like the same as not it not being pressed, uh, and hop over there. But in the case that the key was not found uh, already, we want to reload last keyboard bit <laughs> and then actually check to see if it was set and all of that good stuff. Um, cool. Probably a more elegant way of doing that, but that's what I'm doing. Then, uh, after we have done that and we do all this, if the key was found here, then um, after we have pushed that value, then we need to uh, update the key was found flag. So we have looked up what the value of the key that we found was pressed down was, we have stashed it on the stack, and then we are going to load a literal one into A, and then store that back into last keyboard bit, not last keyboard bit, into the key was found flag. And now that we have done that, um, all we need to do then, because this will keep scanning, but should just keep redoing the inner loop the normal way as if we didn't have a key pressed down because it doesn't even check uh, until we get to the end. And when we finally get to the end, which is right here, 
um, we, instead of just doing load A00, zero, zero, we load A, uh, P was found. We load A, key was found, and if the key was found, um, let's see, so if it, actually if it was not found, then uh, key scan exit. Where am I going with this? Uh, if, if the key, if branch if zero, to keyboard scan exit. Mm. Let's let's do this. If it was not zero, then I will branch to a, uh, an address called key uh, return stack key value. Wait, value vowel. Value. And so if the key was found, then we'll do that. If it wasn't, then we just load zero and return to the caller. Otherwise, we do return stack key value, which will pull A off the stack where it was stashed, and then return to the caller. Does that seem reasonable? I don't know. The only way to know is to build it, push it, See what it does. Load it. And grab our chip. Turn this off now. Don't break anything. Crossing our fingers. I'm going to look at chat before uh, before I pull the trigger on this. Wareham said uh, the L is every seven characters way back when uh, we were running it in the emulator. So, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Wareham said, I'm still betting on the lookup table. The first row column is the last in the lookup table. Uh, yeah, that would be a way to fix it, but it's always doing the right character the first time around, so it's still going to be an off by one some sort. Uh, state is changing between calls to the scan keyboard matrix and give me a button code. Um, where I'm said, stuff the key into a return variable and continue so the last key pressed will be returned instead of the first. It could be so simple. Why so much fixation on getting the first key tearing my hairs out? Because uh, I'm crazy. Uh, it doesn't do anything now, so that's cool. Cool. I wonder if it does anything in the emulator. In a way that can tell me some secrets. Yeah, I mean, this one also doesn't do anything. Um, which is also incorrect, right? Because... In the emulator, it should be constantly printing uh, the semicolons or doing that weird thing with the semicolons and then the L on every seventh one. So, yeah, let's, uh, we should be able to, this should help us somewhat. Um, <laughs> get me down to E something, I think, where the code is. Uh, 
Okay, so we are off in space. That's what the issue is. So I probably like unbalanced the stack or something stupid. So, um, <laughs> I need to find out where our code is now and put a breakpoint there. Would that be simple? looking like code. Oh yeah, looking at these. This is our string. So, now I have to find, yep, there's our big loop for clearing, this, or our big unrolled loop for clearing the screen. Doop, 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 doop. Probably this. Yes. So there's our load A from the lookup table. So why are you unbalancing my stack? Ooh, also, you know, there's an obviously incorrect thing is... Or no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm clearing the P was found at the beginning of, of every iteration. For a second I thought I wasn't doing that. I am doing that. So, do, 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 do. breakpoint uh, E wants it. C. When it is executed, O for E. Run, reset. All right. So, should be pretty straightforward to see why the stack is unbalanced. So firstly, firstly, what going into this, I have stuff on the stack? Why do I have stuff on the stack? Why would I have stuff on the stack? I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as the stack is balanced at the end of the day, but why do I have stuff on the stack already? Um, <laughs> Anyway, so does the latching, clocking in the first bit, storing the value we read in. Is that a reasonable value to store? I guess so. Um, stored, stored 40. Then we load the flag, and if the flag is not zero, we jump to E191, which is down here. Oh, wait. I immediately know what the issue is. See this big fat return to sender right here, or whatever RTS is supposed to stand for? Yeah, we don't want to return. Ingus. We don't want to return anymore. We want to keep on rolling. We want to push, store that, and then uh, we can just fall through to do another inner keyboard loop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see if we build that and it prints semicolons again. Instead of unbalancing the stack and throwing us off into outer space. Run, you bastard. Why won't you run? I'm just gonna reopen this because it gets screwy. It gets so screwy sometimes when you're debugging. FCEUX. Open. That thing. And it still doesn't do anything, but if I reopen the debugger, are we off in space again? Don't think so. Yeah, we're not off in space. So that's good, I think. 
Um, but it's also not printing semicolons. <laughs> but it does say key was found, so that's interesting. Let me set uh, let me set a breakpoint. Actually, well, yeah, let's see. I should be able to see what is stored at OA. Um, no, I want to see what's stored on the stack, which I think is this 3B value. Is 3B a semicolon? Did it look it up right? I might, I wonder if I have my flags backwards at the end. Could also be an issue. Uh, ASCII table, that's what I want to look up. See what is the code for semicolon? Semicolon, semicolon, where are you? Semicolon, semicolon, how do you do? Uh, 3B. So, yeah, it looked up, it put it on the stack. So, the only issue is that we are not returning it now. <laughs> this this is where we check the flag at the very end. And I bet that's backwards from what we want it to be. Betcha. Dude, just run. Uh, come on, man. It is running, but it didn't. What? What? See, like what? What is going on here? What is happening? Oh, now it works. This is not uh, ideal. Um, so let's just remember E19E, and I'm going to reset the whole thing again. Breakpoint not is it not hitting E190 for some silly reason? Could be. Could be. That would be interesting. Return from sub. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be right. <laughs> Dirt Piper says, I prefer return to sender. <laughs> I don't know. M me too. I'm not going to say I'm wrong. I'm going to say me too. I also prefer it. <laughs> Weirworm says, I prefer intercals come from. I'm not even going to explain that one. But it is an excellent rabbit hole if anybody wants to uh, wiki intercal. Okay, so I'm going to assume we're just not hitting that breakpoint. Let me, let me delete and recreate that breakpoint just to make sure I'm not crazy. E19E and didn't set it up wrong. E19E on execute. See, what the shit? Because it's not even doing stepping anymore. Why do you do this to me? And then it says it's at E17C? It's not pause, but now it says it's at E179. And now it will let me step over. What the heck is going on with this emulator here? Could be that the breakpoint isn't getting hit, but also, like, this is so not reliable. It is not really helping me to know what's going on here. is not very good visibility into what's going on inside the ship. I'm going to assume, based on the fact that I've like totally reset this and stuff, that it's not hitting that breakpoint anymore. 
Let me find another spot that might be a good place for him. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that should be... It was E19E, which is load A, uh, key was found. It's this line right here. So is it because this isn't ever getting hit properly? That's probably it. Maybe we're getting stuck in an infinite loop because for various reasons, uh, X is never getting cleared. I think that is possible. Um, well then, let's take the lazy option here. No, let's not take the lazy option. Let's set a breakpoint right at 243, or 241, really anywhere in here, uh, where it transfers X into A, and firstly, it should always hit this breakpoint every time we're at the end of a, a keyboard bit loop iteration, and... I bet it just doesn't hit 48, but we can see what numbers it does hit. So let's let's break at this EXA right here, which is E199. E199, when it's executed. Okie dokie dokie. I am also just going to exit and restart things again because yeah and if I reset are you going to break at E199? where are you? At E176. Seriously, is it FCEUX or is it me? Are breakpoints doing anything anymore? Am I doing something dumb? Anybody? Am I? Am I? At what? At, is anybody know? What the hell? Do I need to? Restart the whole fucking computer. I am very upset. Mildly upset. But upset nonetheless. Okay, let us, I guess, because I still don't know, maybe for some bizarre reason that's just not getting hit. So um, uh, the next best thing is let's just try and get a uh, breakpoint that should definitely be getting hit. So let's do this load A0 for get key. Uh, it should be do 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 do. What's in that between two? So it's load A0, store A key was found, load A0. Load a store a load x. 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 There we go. So e one six c. If this breakpoint doesn't get hit, then f c e u x is fucked. E one six c. On X. Okay. Anyways. Reset. Okay, that got hit. Uh-huh. Okay. I guess now I'm just going to step and see what this thing does, because that means those other breakpoints just weren't getting hit, which is absolutely insane. I mean, it's not insane. It's just... Anyway. It's my fault. That means it's my code's fault. That's why I'm upset. Uh... 
Oh, you know what? Yeah, I should have caught this. Uh, because of this weird spaghetti nature of this code, I wanted to jump to continue keyboard bit loop, not to do another inner keyboard loop. Because it should go here, then it does X and Y stuff, then it goes here, then it goes back to... Yeah. Um, because of fun stuff. Whatever. Uh, it takes a circuitous route. So actually, we don't want it to fall through. We want to clear carry. Branch carry clear to continue KB. There you go. That's probably what's up. Uh, -da -da. uh oops. Wait. You got an A in there, champ. Because you can't type. There we go. Well, I guess apologies to all of the people who work on FC in the US. Uh, it was working just fine. It was working just fine. Okay, it still doesn't do anything, but now it does it in a new, fun, different way. So, that's something. Let's try setting those breakpoints points again. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, boy. These are not going to be the same anymore. They are going to be, like, down here, and they're going to be, like, right here, and it's going to be E19D now. Let's see if we hit that one. We surely don't, but at least now I feel a little bit more trusting about it not hitting it. So we don't get there. That's cool. I'm just reading. Oh boy, is the Red Bull gone? The Red Bull's gone. <laughs> Love you, chat. Where from said, I feel a major ooh moment incoming. Then where from said, there it was. And Cliff Cheney said, there it is. Unfortunately, it wasn't as big of an ooh as I would have hoped for, but, you know, it's, uh, it's still a bit of an ooh. Okay, uh, let's then just go back to what I was going to do, which is uh, da, da, da. Um, put a breakpoint just like at the top of this thing and just step through it like a maniac. Sure. So load Y, load Y6, load Y. Load a zero zero store a zero nine load x zero one x. So set a breakpoint for e sixteen c because it's probably still it's probably doing an infinite loop somewhere in there for some reason because uh, my code sucks. E one six c. Bit, step it, step it, step it. Okay, that's our initialization stuff. Now we go into our first iteration of the bit loop. And we have set the latch. And then we are reading and clocking. Then we are storing the value that we just clocked in. And we are checking our flag. And the flag is not set, so skip right over that branch then we load that bit that we just clocked in again and it and if it was not zero we don't branch 
and right. So this is right because it was zero because it's always zero in the emulator, which in our case would mean a key is pressed down, uh, which the corresponding thing for this keyboard would be semicolon is held down. So it said, oh, semicolon was, was held down. So we look up the value of semicolon in the lookup table. Then we push it onto the stack, 3B, here we go. Then we load one into A um, to, to set the flag and we throw it back into the flag register thingy. Then we clear carry and we branch to the, okay, keep going to the, the next step label. There we go. We increase X, we decrease Y, and then we uh, branch to the circuitous part where now that we have done that, uh, we, what even was that code doing anymore? The do another inner keyboard loop, which just, oh, loads the, let's latch in zero and then set the latch to zero and continue. Uh, so we say, make the next latch zero then branch to the top of the loop again, store that into the latch. So the latch is now lowered again, pocket another value, stash it check the flag. The flag is in fact one now, so we shall branch to E193. E193 goes ahead and... Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is the... Isn't this the do another inner keyboard loop code? Did I... Did I build this before fixing that label or something? Am I going crazy? Because load a clear carry and branch is that code right there, 236, 237, 238. Uh, but I want it to jump to the continue keyboard bit loop. What? Okay, so this doesn't match my code apparently the issue. Can I build it again? Fascinating. Okay, let's do that same thing over again, just to make sure I'm not losing it. Because it looked like it was jumping to do another inner keyboard loop. It shouldn't be. Uh, if the if the flag was set. Oh. It's because I'm looking at the wrong place. Uh, there's your other ooh moment. If you were playing the drinking game at, uh, uh, with me at home. There we go. Oop moments are the best. Ha ha! Ha ha! Okay, finally, we can run this on some hardware again. I feel good about that. And it's not doing the L thing anymore, <laughs> which we still don't really know what that was, but I'm not gonna bother about it. Okay, load, offset. Cool. I can feel my brain getting soft, so that is why I am double checking things and taking my time now, which is good, because hopefully this is it. Hopefully this is it. Uh, and I can take a quick break. Because there is some definite brain mush happening. So Papa needs to go out and touch some grass. 
I just now realized as I said that that may have sounded weird calling myself Papa. I'm sorry, I don't uh, see anybody outside of my house anymore. And so we're just we're just Papa and Mama now. Jokingly. I've been refer since we got a cat, <laughs> I've been referring to myself in the third person as Papa. Like I wanted to go watch some some Papa TV, which means, you know, going and watching computer YouTube. Uh so my apologies for that. <laughs> if calling myself Papa made you feel weird. Okay, so I've programmed. I think this will just work. Due to brain mush, I don't even have a guess. And this is why uh, in your real work, you should take breaks every couple of hours. Actually, that kind of perfectly uh, lines up because, like, in the ideal world, uh, in the ideal world, according to many a state law, at least, like, here in Michigan for, you know, like, non-exempt employees, it is 15 minutes every two hours is your, is your breakage. Uh, and according to my brain, because we've been streaming for, yeah, two and a half hours. So that's why the brain mush is we've gone a half hour over and I haven't taken my 15. Okay, I think it's all set up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am God. <laughs> oh, let's check all the keys, but I think we have a thing that works. Oh, uh, oh, stupid friggin' brain rot. Um, we don't want the key repeat. That's the that's the one thing. Oh well, that that shouldn't be too bad to implement. It's just uh, check to see, like maybe maybe we can use that flag register as like a a state register. We'll check when we when we get to the end of the thing and then check what key was pressed. If it's the same as last time. If how about this? If there were none. Yes, we'll we'll keep like the last key value. And if we do a scan and there are none, then, ugh. okay, right now for this garbage, because I'd, I'd want it to loop until the key is lifted and then a new key is depressed. But for now, for these purposes, I'm just going to have it always return a value and it'll be zero. Uh, potentially, sometimes. Uh, really, what I want this function to do is, like, not do anything until there is a key press detected. But for the purposes of right now, we'll just return a zero, and then whatever software is calling it will say, oh, if it returned a zero, then no key was pressed right now. And if we get to the end of the thing, and uh, if, we, if we get to the end of any given scan, and there was no key press, we will clear like that last last key value so that if you lift and press again that should do a scan find that there was no key pressed then do a scan again and find that the previous value was the no key pressed value does that make sense sure i just want to freaking be done with this already <laughs> uh dirt piper says now can you press the keys fast enough to type out a sentence with no doubled characters um, probably not. This is moving pretty freaking fast. Uh, but, yeah, no. Bot, yes. Doll. Uh, right. It's the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, right? No, because I am missing. There is no... There's no S in there. <laughs> and enter is incorrect, but it actually, it is printing a, a, a what are the carriage return? Because if I hit enter and, yeah. Ha ha! Ha ha! And it looks like all of the keys are actually working. Oh my goodness, that is, it just came together, didn't it? Apparently that's, oh, that's the one I used for plus. That's why, that's why. 
Hey, yeah. <laughs> Good old semicolon. Uh. Yay, that's every key. Uh, space is apparently not printing space characters, which I might have to look into. Who knows? Maybe space is just busted, too. Uh, but hey, that's fun. Um, yeah, so we don't want... <laughs> Pidu! Uh, we don't want... All that key repeat, so at the very least, let me fix that. Oh, but I, I, I should be very pleased by that, and I and I am. And I am. Um, okay, let's try and implement that thing that I was just saying then. Uh, you know what? You know what? To give my brain a quick break before we do that, I'm going to turn this thing off. And I'm going to see if the keycap for F just pops off. Or if it's integrated into the sim, which, you know, hopefully it's not just integrated into the sim. I don't think you could even really do that from a manufacturing standpoint. But. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, get off of there. I think it is slowly but surely. There we go. There it is. Um, and let me see if I can get some contact cleaner. BRB with some deoxy. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, Fox starts with an F, doesn't it? Ah, uh, I guess we worked that enough here, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> one, one would think. Did you say space was being fiddly? Did I just not see that? Was it like working sometimes? I don't know. I have the deoxid out. Let's uh, try and uh, do the space bar. Oh, God, am I going to break stuff? Oh, wow, no, that came off easily. And it, oh, has a nice, nice, uh, like, balancing bar, whatever you call that thing. The thing that keeps it from wobbling. Stabilizer. That, that is not going to be fiddly to get back in. That's, that's lovely. Oh, fiddly is in not working. Yeah, yeah. But hey, that means the hardware works, which is... We haven't confirmed until this moment. The hardware actually works. Fully. Now, the code, maybe not so much. We will see. Do I have the space bar the right way around? Who gives a fuck? Gotta put the all important tweezers in there. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna have to see what I have space mapped to, because I I kind of doubt that it's just that the space key doesn't work. I feel like I must have it mapped wrong or something. Let's see. So I think I mapped it to 20, right? Yeah, I sure did. Um, let's see, so that's semicolon L, K, J, H, and then 20. Which is space, right? Yeah, it's 32. Let's just make sure I'm not crazy. Space, hex 20, decimal 32. Yes, beautiful. And last I checked, my code was set up to print spaces. Hmm. Let's look back at the keyboard matrix. It says space is the one after H. It says. Um, hmm. So, yes. Hmm. Yes. Well, 
let us look at the physical thing we do. Firstly, let's do the all important. Does it actually have continuity test? Which I don't think we have done for the space bar. And I mean, why would why would space bar just be crap in it? But you should check. Space bar is just crapping out. Come on. One handed programming. Super fun. While also trying to press a key. Let's press it down first. Let's press it down first. Okay, you know what? Here, now you are permanently pressed down. And nothing. Nothing. So, space is fucked. I mean, F also looked like it was fucked a second ago, and then it started working just fine. check on control over here. That worked just fine. Yeah. So space is indeed totes F as the actual switch. Hmm. Uh, more deoxit? More working it out? I don't know. What do you think? At least it's not my hardware. It's Texas Instruments bad engineering. They're terrible engineering. Actually, I believe I just ripped this off my hand. Let's do that again. More deoxid, more wiggling. I mean there's already a lot of deoxid in there. And I'm not sure if there's even really a path from top of the key stem here, like down to the body where the actual switch is. No idea. No idea. But this is the best I can do, okay? And I would really prefer to, for any demo, have the ability to type spaces. That would be neat. Are you having fun yet? Are you not entertained? Hey, fix. There you go. There you go. you got to make me go and do your dirty work. And again, I think I have that the right way around. Who cares? Not me. Can I type it? That's all I care about. Okay. Tweezers in. NES on. <laughs> I cannot type. Hello. Okay, no, I just can't type. For a second I thought the keys were weird, but I just can't type. Yay! Okay. That's something. All right, now how about that key repeat thing? And then let's get out of here for a second. Uh, I don't know if my brain has had enough time to recover, but the show must go on. 
All right, so, like I said, basically I think all I want to do is, instead of doing, like, the right thing and uh, not returning anything until we have detected some kind of key press, uh, what I want to do is find my code, first of all. Doodly, doodly, doodly. Uh, find my flipping code and uh, I mean really my code is already kind of set up firstly to um, not send it I mean this isn't really something we can we can we can debug it but it would be a little annoying uh, to debug whether this returns or not, because right now, whether it returns a zero or whether it doesn't return at all, uh, you're not going to see anything get printed. But, like, since I have this, uh, this bit of code that already is, like, returning, you know, doing two branches based on whether the key value is set to anything useful or not, um, what if instead of returning zero, all I need to do, and this isn't going to do my, this isn't going to handle my uh, uh, key pressed thing, but like, uh, well, it, we just change this from uh, branch carry clear, clear carry, and jump back up to get key. That's how much my brain is now. You can't just write the name of the label. So, right, or no, ugh. <laughs> What is wrong with me? There we go. Clear carry, branch carry clear, back to the beginning of git key, and do the whole damn thing over again. And I don't think there's any state here that uh, would get screwed up there. So, if we didn't find a key, we just do the whole damn thing over again and don't return. So that actually kind of solves that issue of I wanted a, a function that doesn't return until it detects a key press. Now, here is the thing. Um, let's start with adding a last pressed key value. And that's going to be at zero page OB. Cool. And now that we have that, we can just start real simple by um, pull a and also store a to last pressed key. And then how about here if we we should probably also in it last pressed key somewhere. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's let's make the dumb version of this that just doesn't let you have the same key be pressed twice, regardless, and then make the version that lets you unpress the key and repress the key. Uh, so we will store last pressed key. And then uh, we will do a check here. Um, <laughs> Ooh, this is weird because we're not, uh, we need to keep cycling the matrix, but uh, we're not handling multiple key presses. So if we, hmm. If we just ignore the key that is pressed, if it matches the previous key that's pressed, and then continue looping through our uh, uh, keyboard scanning code, it's going to pick up any other keys that are pressed down, and then it's going to go haywire. We don't want that. Um, so maybe what I do is we do set key was found. So let's see. So... Um, we do all the regular stuff. We 
set key was found, you do all this, but maybe, I guess what we can do is at the very end, if we did find a key, let's see. So if we did find a key, which is what we hit here, if there was a key here, we can pull it, store it, and then we, let's also check, uh, or actually no, before we store it, because we want to compare it against the last press key, so you can't overwrite that yet. Uh, let's compare it to the value that's in last press key, and if they are equal, let's just call get key again. Yeah, I guess. Let me let me do that. See if it makes sense. If it doesn't work, then yeah. So if they were equal, we go back and we run get key all over again. We say, yo, uh, try getting another key, okay? Um, which this will also get screwy if you have any keys that come earlier than that key and you press them. Uh huh. Shh. Don't worry about it. Uh, if people can type things at the show, then maybe maybe when we get to doing, you know what? What even we'll do this way down the road when we have basic implemented and we are like looking for things to zhuzh up we'll do like the proper you can have multiple keys pressed we'll keep a image of the matrix or a bitmap of the matrix in memory way of handling things for right now if there are artifacts of some sort shh, don't worry about it uh okay so yeah we pull it if it equaled the last thing, we do everything over again. Otherwise, we store it in last pressed key, and it's still an A, and then we return it. Let's give that a try. So this should, at the very least, not allow me to type the same character a couple times in a row. Uh, however, hmm, you know what? I was going to say, well, no. Let's write this, and I think it will do what I said, wherein I will actually have to type another key before I can type the same key again, which is not what you, you want, but it's a stepping stone. Um, and I, I think, let me just keep it in my head and not, not open my big dumb mouth. I think there is a small change I can make to this that will enable the full featured uh, detect when a key is raised and kind of reset whether you can press that key again. I think. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Back, load, offset, tool, open the programming dialog, yank the thing, yank it out, yank it and move it all about, put it in the program or take it out. Because that is what it is all about. Scream and shout. <laughs> Rare Worm said, and I fully agree, it's all fine as long as you put it in the documentation. Fully agree, my friend. It's not wrong. Just because uh, you don't expect it to work like that doesn't mean it's wrong. Yay. Programs. Very good. Anyway. Okay. Good. Okay. So yes, that works the way I expected. Can't type the same key multiple times in a row, but also you don't get key repeats when you hold the key down. Yay. Yay! Okay, so now...
and space works and all that good stuff. Uh, so now, um, yeah, let's see if that quick change that I had in mind does what I think, uh, which I, you know, already kind of forgotten what it was. Um, so if we do a scan, oh yeah, so if we do a scan and we didn't get any key found, which is this case, um, we can set last pressed key to some uh, garbage value when we try again. And that should, that should be fine. So some key that can never be pressable. So let's just set it to FF. And I think like that will make the whole thing work. And then we will quick brown fox. Uh, yeah, so let's load a literal FF store A in last pressed key to say the last pressed key was garbage because there wasn't anything pressed. And oh, if that's if that's it and I'm done for the moment, I am very happy. Because bro, I want to work on this floppy drive interface. It's gonna be wild. If if you thought this if you thought my brain was mushing from this, it's uh eh. <laughs> when we start trying to connect a floppy disk controller to this thing, I'm going to die. I'm just going to die. Anyway. Uh, mush brain is in full effect, so I am doing the full. Paying attention. I built it. I'm going to load it again. I'm going to program it. Step by step, don't take your eyes off of the prize. I'm going to turn this off. I just don't want to do that thing again that I did a few episodes ago where I just like took the chip out of the out of the cartridge, put it on the desk. Or no, I think I put it in the programmer, chatted for a minute, then took it out of the programmer, put it back in the cartridge, turned the thing on, and then wondered why the behavior was exactly the same because I never actually hit the program button. Uh, I just don't want to, I don't want to waste my time with that again. There's already so many, so many good ways to waste my time on this project. Program. Very good. And I'm kind of amazed. This is why, like, I'm trying to get better at not hunting down things that are probably wild goose chases. Because do you remember, does anybody who has been, like, religiously watching uh, remember when I was first making the cartridge and, like, it seemed like getting it in the slot, like, just right was really important because sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. And I think maybe that happened to my own personal off-camera experience than it did, like, on video. But it was like that. Um, and whether it's just from, like, things, like, settling in from cycling it a lot or not, that has not been an issue at all. Like, I shove it in, I put the tweezers in, and it's fine. I have not, like, we had one issue a minute ago with it not being seated quite right. If I had been chasing down that, that wild goose chase, we would have wasted so much time. But it turns out, no, it's not actually an issue. And I do that so much, like, just in my life in general. Okay. So sometimes it prints two Fs, which is interesting, and that is probably because of switch bounce. Hmm. Do we care? Do we really care that much? Like, it's definitely going to be, ooh, it's definitely going to be because of switch bounce. But how much do we care? And how hard is it going to be to fix, to, to debounce that? Yeah, it seems like it's when you type fast. It, uh, sometimes multi-types. So, uh... I'm going to say it's not that big of an issue. Let's find out. 
I'm going to not look at the screen too closely. I'm going to mostly look at my hands. And I'm going to type some quick brown fox, bro. Is it... It's the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog? Come on. I don't know how far away, far behind chat is. I don't have this on super latency mode. Jumps. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. No spoilers. Oh, wow. I expected some screw up there. I expected some issues. Uh, Y'all, we got ourselves uh, a NES that's got a keyboard on it. And it prints some stuff. Okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, that's still, I'm still an hour short, though. Um, I, I kind of made a vague promise to Wearworm that if I had a little extra time and I didn't use up the full four hours on this first session that um, I would, like, <clears throat> do something <laughs> with the, uh, oh, making, making, like, the shift key work and stuff. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I think... The brain is feeling mushy enough. The wife wanted some help with some things, and I should still, like, care for my family. So, I'm going to call it. <laughs> Implement a bell character. Uh, we, we'll do this. We will do that. I want to do that. We're not going to do it for VCF. This is the, the hell week for VCF, and it's get it just barely working. That's good enough. Um, yeah, so... Let's do that thing where I look at the camera and I say, uh, actually, this time is weird because I'm going to do two streams in a day, and I kind of plan on doing that tomorrow as well. Uh, but good to see y'all. Good times. We got a keyboard. I'm calling it, I'm calling Rev1 keyboard done for now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go take a break for a while, come back at like 8-ish EST, uh, which if you just want an hour offset because you're not in EST... Uh, it is five right now, so in like three hours, and uh, we'll try sticking a floppy disk controller on this thing. See ya. I love ya. Bye bye. No, not good night. I'll be back in three hours. <laughs> there is much to do. There will be more today, and there will be more tomorrow, and then the rest of the week. Uh, it, 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 it's regular work days, so I can only do so much. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, hasta 